All right, class, you guys have 15 minutes to complete this test. We're starting right now. A vehicle is traveling at various speeds from t equals 0 seconds to t equals 10 seconds, where t represents time. Using the data in the table below, estimate the total distance traveled by the car using an area approximation method of your choice. How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? Riemann sum is a type of approximation method used to approximate the area of a function, or the area below the curve on a close interval. The sum can be calculated by dividing the area into shapes, commonly rectangles or trapezoids, that is similar to the region being calculated. Then finding the area of each of those shapes, and lastly adding the areas of the shapes to get a final value. It can be useful to find the area below a curve because, depending on what is being graphed, the area under a curve can generate a value not explicitly shown by the curve. For example, the area under a curve of a graph comparing speed and time can represent the total distance traveled, or the area under a curve of a graph comparing the rate of flow and time can represent the total volume of a certain substance. To get started, the left Riemann sum, or LRAM, uses a series of rectangles where the top left corner of the rectangles touch the function. For this approximation method, you would only use the x values of the rectangles that touch the function, which will only be the left sides of each rectangle, hence the term left Riemann sum. To begin, start by finding the coordinates where the corners of the rectangle touch the curve. These points are the values that will be plugged into the formula with two variables where delta x represents the change in x value between each rectangle. In other words, this value represents the width of the rectangle, and f of x, which represents the height of each rectangle. If the data table has given different x sub-intervals, we will need to individually multiply delta x by the corresponding f of x value. However, in the formula, area equals the width times the height of each rectangle. The x sub-intervals are equal to each other and can be factored out like I'm doing here. Since we are using LRAM and the function is increasing, the approximation we calculated is an under-approximation because we are missing all this area between the rectangle and the function. If we were to use LRAM with a decreasing function, our approximation would be an over-approximation since the area of the rectangles would go above the curve. With the data given, you will multiply the width of each rectangle with its corresponding height for each rectangle, and then add up all the areas to get the final area of the region below the function within the closed interval, which comes out to be approximately 225 meters, travel between 0 and 10 seconds. Since this function is increasing, using RAM will give us an over approximation since the rectangles go above the function. On the other hand, if the function was decreasing, the approximation would be an under approximation because the rectangles don't cover the entire area of the region below the curve. Now using the right Riemann sum to approximate, we will use rectangles where the top right corner of the rectangles touch the function. The process to use this method is exactly the same as LRAM. However, the values that are plugged into the formula would be different. For this method, you would only use the y values that correspond to the right sides of the rectangles. Again, you would multiply the width of each rectangle with its corresponding height and add the areas to get the final area of the region below the curve which comes out to be 342 meters. More accurate area approximation can be obtained by using trapezoids instead of rectangles. Like with the first two methods, the trapezoidal method works by finding the sum of the areas of a certain number of shapes beneath the curve. In this case, the shapes are trapezoids. As you can see, the trapezoids follow the curve a lot closer than the rectangles did, which will result in a more reliable estimation. To use this method, you will need to know the equation for the area of a trapezoid. It is area equals 1 half height times base 1 plus base 2. In this case, the variable height, or h, represents delta x. In other words, h is the difference in x values for each point. In this example, the h values are different for each trapezoid, since the x coordinates don't share a common difference. Base 1 and base 2, or b1 and b2, represent the two different y values present for each trapezoid. This means that, in the final equation, you will use both of the y values that correspond with the two x values. Unlike with LRAM and RRAM, when you either use the right or the left y value. Using this information, you can plug in the values of h, b1, and b2 for each trapezoid. And by finding the sum of these values, you are able to generate a more accurate approximation of the area, which in this case is approximately 283.5 meters traveled. Another important thing to keep in mind is when using the trapezoidal approximation method is whether or not the area generated is an over approximation or an under approximation. This can easily be determined by looking at the curve's concavity. If the curve is concave up, the estimation will be an over approximation. If the curve is concave down, the approximation will be an under approximation.
Now I get it. The function's increasing. So LRAM would give me an under approximation, RAM would give me an over approximation, and the trapezoidal method would give me the most accurate area. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing.